I wanted to do a little review, uh, as Apostle, Apostle does, because we know those last couple of chapters, I think around 19, 20, 21, or 22, they dealt with Ahab, they dealt with Jezebel, and they dealt with Elisha. Amen? Elijah. Amen? And so um, I was just going to do a little review, but I wanted to start off with this scripture first because I want to bring all of us back into remembrance of even how we got here. Because remember, we started at the beginning. We're going and doing a Bible survey and look at how we got here with all these kings. And we know that uh, David was the king. And then after David, then well, Saul was king, David and then Solomon. And then there was a big split. Amen. And all this stuff that's transpiring and and. Let's ask ourselves, what is the Lord teaching us? What is he sharing with us? What is he showing us? So uh, if you could, Aaron, I just want to bring this back to our members. Let's uh, get 1 Samuel uh, chapter 8, verse 1. And we're going to read a few, a few verses, but I want to bring us to remembrance of how we really got here. Amen. And it came to pass when Samuel was old that he made his sons judges over Israel. So at that time, they were just judges. Amen. Now the name of his firstborn was Joel, and the name of his second was Abiah. They were judges in Beersheba. And his sons did what? Walked not in his ways, but turned aside after lucre and took bribes and perverted judgment. So let's look at verse 4. Then all the elders of Israel gathered themselves together and came to Samuel in Ramah. And said unto him, Behold, you're old, and your sons do not walk in your ways. Now make us a king to judge us like all other nations. There we go. This is how we got here, guys. Make us a king like everybody else. Now, how many times do we look out in the world and we tell God in our hearts and our thoughts, we want to be like everybody else? Not knowing, not realizing that we're a peculiar people, that we're set apart for a particular thing. Amen. And, and, and in Christ Jesus, in the kingdom of God, there is no greater life. There's no greater living. There's nothing outside of living in Christ. Everything else is vanity. Everything else is worthless and it's useless. There's nothing that the world can offer us. So what does the, what's in the world? Let's look at that. I want to get that too because as we're going, I want you to keep these scriptures in the back of your mind of how we got here because I always look at ourselves in this. They, they wanted a king because they want to be like everybody else. Amen? So let's get this next scripture. And Aaron, that's the scripture I gave you that I wanted in the living version. That's 1 John chapter 2. We're going to read verse 16 and 17. So let's look at these two. For the world offers only a craving for physical pleasure, a craving for everything we see, and pride in our achievements and possessions. These are not from the Father, but they are from the world. Next verse. And this world is fading away along with everything that people crave. But everyone who does what pleases God will live forever. Look at this exceeding great promise. Now, we did this in the New Living Translation because I liked it. It was just very plain. And the reason I brought that up is because, number one, look at how we got here. Wanting to do and look like and be like the world. What does the world offer? It, it, the world doesn't offer us anything. And so what brought me to bring this up is that I wanted to do a little, re little review because... Um, Let's get, um, let me see where I was. I just lost my spot. Okay, and so just a little review. So chapter, uh, 1 Kings chapter 21, verse 1 now. Uh, that's when um, Ahab, who is being really, uh, Jezebel is running the kingdom through him. She's the, in charge, and so he, she just, she just, he, he, she, Whatever he wants done, she does his dirty work. He doesn't have the ability to do stuff for herself. So she, she uh, does his dirty work. So the reason I brought these two scriptures up is because what happened was he came back. Remember, he was pouting about he asked somebody to give them their inheritance. Now think about that. Give me your inheritance. I give you money for it. I give you some. I just want it. I saw it. I like it. It's close to my house. I want this. How many people in this world want what they want? They don't care the cost. So what really was baffling to me, not baffling, but just surprising, is that Jezebel says, listen, you the king, you can do whatever you want. That's what she was saying. She said, why are you acting like this? You the king. And you would think that he would have learned and start taking up her ways, but at the end of the day, she still was the, was the strong arm in the household. Amen? And so she wrote letters, and this is, happens 
in the world. The, the word of God says there's nothing new under the sun. So what she did was she wrote a letter and uh, said, let's have a feast. And notice she said, put up a fast. Everybody fast about it. So people in the world fast just like people in the body of Christ fast. Do y'all know that? Because she wasn't living right. She said, let's proclaim a, proclaim a fast. We fix and do an evil deed. Do you hear this? Let's proclaim a fast, but they did an evil deed. So what she did was, in the, in the word of God, it says, let it, by the mouth of uh, two or three witnesses, let every word be established. So, she, so one man come and lie on you. They say, well, we can't trust that because it's just one person. She said, so set up two men to come and lie on neighbors so uh, he can get killed. And so we learned from Apostle last week that it was just not him. It was his whole household. Now, we're talking about a whole household. And, and um, I was just thinking, like, wow, this is something. The whole household got destroyed because of his, the world. What we see, what we want in this world, and we take what we want. We don't care the consequences. And that is all the world offers us. And, and we, if we don't see anything, we should be able to see that now, even with this presidency. Even though God is in control, people want what they want. And at what I noticed about the world, if you look at a lot of movies, they're talking about people. Uh, it's always talking about folks that want to rule the world. They want to be in charge. So that sounds like to me you're trying to take God's place because you can't rule the world. You're one person. How are you going to rule the world? I mean, God is in charge, but... We, we see that he's trying to run everything. And so he didn't think anything twice about uh, killing this man. As soon as, she, soon as he was killed, she said, okay, you can get up and go on and get your vineyard now. And he got up and ran down there and got his vineyard. But let's look here. This is what amazes me. So let's, get, let's go. And I was just reviewing uh, chapter 21 because I'm not going to go that far. So let's get um, 1 Kings. I'm just going to do a little review. Uh, that's 1 Kings uh, chapter 21, verses um, uh, uh, 15. And when Jezebel heard the news, she said to Ahab, you know the vineyard neighbor wouldn't sell you? Well, you can have it now. He's still in living, new living, but that's fine. She said, you can have it now. That's why I would like to live because it's just plain English. And it came to pass when Jezebel heard that he was stoned and was dead, that Jezebel said, arise, take possession of the vineyard of Naboth, the Jezreelite, which he refused to give thee for money. So she said, he should have he just took the money. He would have been living today. Is that something? She, she, he should have just took the money. Okay, so next verse. And, and it came to pass when Ahab heard that Nahab was, Naboth was dead, that he rose up and got down to get, uh, go down to the vineyard of Naboth and uh, the Jesuit to take possession of it. So as soon as he heard that he was dead now, he ran down there to get this vineyard. But let's look what, he, what caused him to get upset. So then the word of the Lord came to Elijah the Tishbite saying this, Arise and go down to meet Ahab of Israel, which is in Samaria. And behold, he is in a vineyard of Naboth, whither he is gone down to possess it. Now, now, what does this tell us about God? God is involved in these intricate things in our life when we think he's not. He, he's showing us, he's revealing to us who he is. He says, go down there and meet him. He's fixing to go and take uh, possession of this uh, land that they done robbed and did everything to get. And um, next verse. And thou shalt speak unto him. Now listen, what, listen to what God is saying. Thus saith the Lord, has you, have you killed somebody and taken possession? I mean, the Lord is appalled, just like we should be. Have you killed somebody and they're going to take their stuff? And thou shalt speak unto him, saying, Thus saith the Lord, in the place where the dogs lick the blood of Naboth, shall the dogs lick thy blood, even yours. And we know that we saw that later on. Go to the next verse. This is what I want you to get. And Ahab said to Elijah, Hast thou found me, O my enemy? And he answered, I have found thee because you have sold yourself to work evil in the sight of the Lord. Next verse. Behold, I will bring evil upon thee and will take away thy posterity and will cut off Ahab from, his, from him that pisses against the wall and him that is shut up and left in Israel. This is a strong sentence here. Okay, go ahead. 
And I will make your house like the house of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, and like the house of Basha, the son of Ahijah, for the provocation wherewith you have provoked me to anger and made Israel sin. It's not just about that, but what he's done is affected the whole nation. Amen? Next verse. And, and of Jezebel also spake the Lord, saying, The dog shall eat Jezebel by the wall, uh, by the wall of Jezreel. Next verse. And him that died to Ahab. Okay, go to the next verse. And this one thing, but there was none like Ahab, which did sell himself to work wickedness in the sight of the Lord, uh, whom Jezebel, whose wife, stirred up. And this is all the stuff that he did. And he did very abominably in following idols according to the things uh, as the Amorites, whom the Lord cast out before the children of Israel. Let me go one more verse. I think I'm done with this piece of it. And it came to pass when he heard those words. Yeah, this is what I want to get. And he heard these words and he rent his clothes and put sackcloth upon his flesh and fasted and lay in sackcloth and went softly. See, now remember that he had got a word before he didn't do right. He got This is the third time the Lord came to him and said something to him. But this time it seemed like it got his attention. Uh, maybe it got his attention because... The Lord pronounced a heavier sentence on him. But one thing about the Lord, when he give you a word, it don't even come the next day or the next day or the next day. God gives us time. Are we not seeing that the Lord gives us time to get things right? I mean, the Lord. And so he when he heard that, something caused him to sit back and ponder and think. And he felt bad about it. I don't know if he felt bad about his kids. My kids going to suffer for all this craziness I've done or whatever the case may be. But it says that he rent his clothes and put sackcloth upon his flesh and fasted and, and went softly. So he, in other words, he began to acknowledge that God was God. This time right here, because remember before he went to fight. And when they went out to fight, the Lord said, I'm going to fight this battle for you. But one thing about it, he said, but they're going to come back again now. I'm fighting for you this time, but they're going to come back again. But he went right back behind it and kept doing evil, even after this right here. Amen. Let me tell you one thing I read, though, that's interesting. Where you keep saying that, where it keeps saying that they, he, 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 he destroyed some of the things, uh, the idol worship, broke them and did all of that. The other person did. But this is one thing I read uh, in my studies. It said that. Even though they, they sometimes they, it says that they let the gro they kept the groves and they let some of the stuff stay. It said that the people were still confused and not still confused, but still thought that these. Even though there were other gods, they thought there were other gods. They were still scared of those other gods. That's why they didn't completely wipe them out. They took down stuff. They took down stuff. But you notice they still let a few little things linger because they were still afraid. Even though they saw all this stuff that God did, they still thought there were some other gods that they could make upset. And so they still tried to be, okay, well, you, God, we're going to do what you say, but we ain't going to mess with them too much because they still may do something to us. So, and I can see that, you know, I'm not saying that that's, that's a word, but it's, it, it baffles me that they still let things linger and linger and linger. Amen. They let the stuff stay, even though God shows them there is no other God save Jehovah. Amen. And so let's look at verse 28. This is what the Lord wants us to know about him. And the word of the Lord came to Elijah the Tishbite saying, Seest thou how Ahab hath humbled himself before me? Because he humbled himself before me, I will not bring evil in his day. Out of all he did, God is showing us his compassion. And if we don't get anything out of this message, look at how quickly he went and gave this man a word and went back not too long after that and, and said, the Lord going to prolong your life. Look at how great and how awesome and how loving our God is. I mean, it, and, and, and do you remember when David was, uh, had messed up and they gave him choices he could make? He said, I'd rather fall in the hands of God. Do you know why now? I'd rather fall in the hands of uh, uh, um, Ahab and Jezebel didn't have no compassion for Nate, this man. They didn't even think, well, oh, his, his family gave him that. That's an inheritance. Who, who would want somebody to take their inheritance? They weren't caring about no inheritance. They said, give us what we want. Uh, we've heard that before, or else we're going to take it by force. Amen? Taking it by force. So we're looking at this thing because as we're doing this, uh, uh, the other scripture that I wanted to bring out is that the Lord wants us to know, uh, know him. And as we're reading to learn him and to know him, it says, because they that know their God shall do mighty exploits. How can you do mighty exploits if you don't know your God? You have to know. So he's laying it out for us, for us to get to know him, to know his heart, to know his ways, to know his compassion, to know his love, to know God is inter, is, is, it intervenes in our life. Now, how many times have we done messed up 
and humble ourselves that God kept something from us and we didn't have to deal with it. See, we don't know, but I assure you, many times we have done stuff that have caused some damage in our life and somebody stood in the gap for us, somebody prayed for us, and the Lord said, okay, let it, that suffice. Amen? Amen? So see, we're seeing that, so if he did it for him out of all this wickedness that he's done, I'm sure he's done it for us, and he does it for us every single day. Because it says to us, his mercies are renewed day by day. I don't think we understand that. His, whatever happened yesterday is over with. Now what we'll do, we'll worry about it for day on end, day on end. And Lord, I, I, I'm so sorry I did that, Lord. I know better. He said, what you talking about? <laughs> what are you talking about? But, but then somebody bring up to you, oh, Lord, they's talking about me. What, what, what are we doing? His mercy is renewed day by day. You're in a day with a brand new mercy. The mercy that you used yesterday is gone. The, the issue is gone. The sin is gone. And so we have got to begin to believe and act like that because to be truly who God has called us to be, we cannot walk around condemned and convicted all the time because it interferes with our victory. And the enemy going to keep you there if you let him keep you there. Oh, you know, like Apostle said, you can't kill nothing, nothing won't die. Every time you turn around, the enemy says, oh, well, every time they get the victory, let me let something loose on them. Because that, that's all it's going to take. Just let a little loose on them. And then he'll be walking around feeling sorry for two or three weeks. And then soon he get up on high again, let something else come. Oh, I shouldn't have did that. I shouldn't have said that. And here we are living well below our means in the kingdom. It says, like Paul said, I am who I am by the grace of God. If he says I'm an ambassador, I'm an ambassador. If I'm a child of God, I'm a child of God. And look at this thing what the world says. Uh, I'm just a dirty old sinner. Show me that in the word. It says our righteousness is as filthy rags. A poor, see, that's a poor interpretation. But we're born again. We are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. We are the righteousness of God. He says, even when you fail, you can't fail. He says, you're more than a conqueror. How can you be more? Y'all help me tonight. How can you be more than a conqueror? If he says you're more than a conqueror, and then as I'm partnering this week, I'm thinking about how anxiety is in this world. We know mental health is just on a rise, people. And you know, I said, you know, the Lord said, what can you can you add one stature to your life by worrying? And let me tell you, as I pondered and pondered and pondered, the only thing that simple came to me, it says, anxiety and worry don't change a thing. So why do we do it? Why do we entertain it? Why do we occupy it? Worrying and anxiety won't change a thing. Think about that with me. It won't change a thing. He says, what can you do by worrying? Can you, he says, you can't even add one stature. You can't, he says, you can do nothing by worrying. Worrying accomplishes nothing. So why do it? Why waste your energy? And how many of you know that when you worry, you talk about energy we use? Oh, boy, it saps your energy. It saps your strength. How can you be more than a conqueror doing all of that? Amen? So let's look here. Uh, Ahab humbled himself before the Lord and the Lord turned around what he said and we're not only have we seen this with him we saw this with Hezekiah so as we're going through the word we are learning our God and we are going to do mighty exploits in his name amen and so as he did this um, and, and I want to say that we, in this day and time there are a lot of adults that act just like uh, Ahab this is a picture for us. There are a lot of people that want what they see, and, and it's the pride of life. That's the problem. They, they, they want what they, It says there's nothing in the world that they can offer but the pride of life, the lust of the eyes, and the lust of the flesh. Now, if we know this ahead of time, we got to keep check on ourselves. We got to keep check on ourselves and say, Lord, I, you know, be honest with yourself. Be transparent with the Lord. Lord, you know, I'm wanting this. I need that. I, I feel like I need this. I don't really need all that. I don't need this. I don't need that. But we have to keep Check on ourselves because this is all the world offers us. The lust of the flesh, the, 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 the pride of life, lust of the flesh, and lust of the eyes. And we can see this. And the Old Testament, see, is our schoolmaster. 
if we want to see what it's like in the realm of the spirit, to me, this is our picture of how it is really in the realm of the spirit. Because we see the Lord intervening in Ahab's life like this. We see a word coming in a word saying, hey, you did this. That, that's not pleasing to me. You can't do this. You can't do that. The Lord is really intervening in their lives. And all of these, these kings, he's showing how he dealt with Solomon. Solomon. He says, Solomon, what you want? And Solomon says, I need some wisdom. I'm young. I'm a kid. I don't know what to do. The Lord says, I'm pleased with that. So what does that tell you about your God? He humbled himself and God changed his mind. What does that tell you? You see, amen? It tells us that the God we serve is an awesome God. Okay, so let's get down. Okay, let's go to, um, yeah, we just read verse 29, yes. So let's go to chapter 22. One. And they continued three years without wars between Syria and Israel. Now we're going to go to uh, Chronicles a little bit because I want to show you the whole story. And it came to pass in the third year that Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah, came down to the king of Israel. Now just pay attention. Now this is interesting. Uh, we got to figure out what makes people do the things they do. We can't really figure it out, but we got to watch it because the things that we see them doing, are, we're, we're, we're prone to do the same thing. Amen. Mm -hmm. And he came down in the third year, and I read that, and he said that he came to the king of Israel. We know who this is. This is Ahab. Jehoshaphat, Ahab. Okay, go to the next verse. <clears throat> and the king of Israel said unto his servants, Know ye that Ramoth Gilead is ours, and we be, and we be still and take it not out of the hands of Syria the king. He says, this is our stuff, and the, Syria, the, the, the Syri, uh, Syrian king has it. And he said to Jehoshaphat, wilt thou go with me to battle in Ramoth Gilead? And Jehoshaphat said to the king Israel, I am as thou art. And we read this before. But like I said, we're just doing a little review. So he made league with him. So let's see how God dealt with it. He, for some reason, this uh, uh, Ahab, uh, Ahab is not doing right. And Jehoshaphat went down and made a league with him. He went down and made a league with him. Now, even when you're, if it's your brother, if they're not pleasing the Lord or living right, uh, you can love them, you can treat them right, but don't, make, don't get in partnership with them now. We don't need to be getting in partnership. And the Lord even says don't be unequally yoked. This is a part of being unequally yoked because how can two walk together lest they be agreed? You know when you see people hang together and you say, how is this person hanging with this person? There's a, they're, 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 believe me, there's a, uh, something that's drawing them together. There's something that's drawing them together. So something in Jehoshaphat made him go down and make a, make a lead with Ahab, even though Ahab, Ahab outright serves, uh, um, he outright serves Balaam. Outright. It's no, it's no hiding. He serves Balaam. He serves the enemy. Amen? But even in him serving the enemy, the Lord gave him compassion and still said, I am God. Now, out of all this time, you're going to know I'm God. But you know what I, I think about that? Is that the Lord wants us to know that no matter what you do, he gives everybody, nobody, God, I guess I'll say God is with, we're without excuse. Ahab is without excuse. You can't go to God and say, I didn't know you was a true God. You can't go to God and say, I didn't know I would have did better. God came right to him and showed him, hey, you ain't been doing right. I'm telling you what I'm going to do. And guess what? He saw what the Lord did. They didn't fight that battle. The Lord fought a battle for him to show him that I'm the God of the battles. I'm the, I am he. It is me. And I'm going to do this for you to show you who I am. But make no mistake about it. These same folks coming back next year. Let's, we're going to see how you're going to do next year. <laughs> Amen. So let's look down here. And remember, they were talking about, um, and this is what gets me. So when they were sitting together, remember, um, both of the kings, Jehoshaphat and uh, Ahab, were sitting back, and they wanted a word from the Lord. Amen? So they were asking them other prophets, and Jehoshaphat, being a man of God, he said, can we not inquire the Lord about what we ought to do here? And they called, <laughs> let me imagine. So see, but Jehoshaphat sitting here watching him do this with these false prophets. You see, so you see, there's something there because he should have said, man, I'm not doing that with you. <laughs> I'm not going to sit down with you. And then he said, so is there not a can we inquire of the Lord? Because now what didn't happen is that he already agreed to go fight with him anyway. He didn't ask God about that, though, did he? 
You see, he didn't ask God about that. So when he came down, he said, can we inquire at least about the Lord? And so when he inquired about the Lord to come and help him, uh, remember, he asked for the prophet. He said, it's a prophet, but he don't never prophesy right towards me. Now, I find that very interesting because he wanted the prophet to tell him what he wanted to hear. And he got mad with the prophet. He said, how many times have I told you to tell me exactly what God say? So when he tell you what God say, you get mad with him and throw him in the prison. It's, look, look at this. You ask for the truth. When you get the truth, you get mad, throw the man in the dungeon. I mean, I'm just amazed. So guess what? When we look at stuff on the news and see in the world, we shouldn't be amazed because look at this nonsense. You're hearing from the almighty God and you clowning like that. I mean, do you not know what God could do to you? You, the Lord going to give you a word now and tell you. And so, so what, my, what, what um, the prophet did, well, he came and just told him what he wanted to hear. He said, let your word be like they were. He said, okay, I'll tell you what they said. But he gave him, a, then after that, he gave him some insight. He said, well, I did see Israel scattered, on, <laughs> scattered around. And he said, and, and guess what God did? But he gave him even more, I, even more. He says, and I looked up and saw the throne of the almighty God. And at that throne, I saw the Lord saying, who going to get Ahab to go up there because he got to die? Do we not see what we're seeing? We're getting an a, a, a insight into the kingdom and the throne room of God. We're getting insight into what goes on in the throne room. We're seeing things happen before our very eyes. We're seeing it in the natural, but we're seeing how it transpired from up above. That's amazing to me. And so what he said was, uh, who's going to go? Now, the word of God would say the Lord sent a lion spirit. He didn't, I, don't, I mean, the Lord didn't really send the lion spirit. A lion spirit agreed to do it. <laughs> God doesn't send evil. You see? So he so when it, when it went down there, so when he, the guy, he got mad with the guy. So I'm saying, all these people are hearing from God, but then they're going to get mad. Talking about he'll never prophesy good towards me. You ain't doing nothing good. <laughs> How can he prophesy good towards you and you're lying, conniving, and cheating, and stealing, and killing people? Is that something? But we we'll hear him. He said, he don't never prophesy good to me. So that, do you see why it's so many of these uh, 800 numbers that you can call and get a, a word from the devil? It's so many because people want to hear what they want to hear. Same in the body of Christ. People want to go to go to church and they want to hear what they want to hear. You dare tell them they, they need to get their life right. Oh, you, you got to fight. You dare tell them they got to line their life up with the word of God or that's not the kingdom. I've seen it time and time again. People come and say, oh, the word of God is so good at Christian growth. But as soon as they hear something they don't want to change or they don't want to do, they're going to burn that door up and leave out of here. But they don't realize they're not leaving Christian growth. They're leaving God. They don't realize they're going to be accountable for that. They don't, we, we don't real, you're going to be accountable for it. Just like Ahab, he was accountable. But see, they kept, see when this king did this, see, the Lord already told him that. But see, what's, what's, what's amazing is that Ahab, when he went, he knew what was going to happen because he knew the word of the Lord was the word of the Lord. But he went on anyway. But I was so amazed that he's going to say, I'm going to go in disguise. And you know, Pastor talked about that last week. I mean, you don't go in disguise. He, it sounds like he tried to get Jehoshaphat killed to me. I could be wrong. You wear your robe, I'm going to be in disguise. But mind you now, you're going to battle for me. I ain't going, I, I'm not fighting. I'm coming with you to battle. You invited me to come to battle, but you want me to go with my robe on, and you're going to be somewhere acting like you don't know what's going on here somewhere for them to kill me. Oh, my gosh. But now, is that not what he learned from Jezebel? Manipulation and deception? Manipulation and deception. And that don't work with God. It says even the darkness is light to God. Amen. And I shared that with you. We got a glimpse in another realm. So let's go down to, uh, I want you to see what else happened. So let's go to uh, Second Chronicles chapter 1. We're going to get a better view because I want you to see something else went on with Jehoshaphat that we missed a little bit of. Okay, Second Chronicles, that's chapter 20. Second Chronicles chapter 20. And it came to pass after this also that the children of Moab and the children of Ammon with them, uh, besides, besides the Ammonites, came against Jehoshaphat to battle. 
Let's go ahead. And then there came some that told Jehoshaphat, saying, there cometh a great multitude. Now, see, somebody trying to come, come against Jehoshaphat. So uh, what the piece that we missed was when he joined, uh, I missed one scripture, when he joined league with Ahab, when he came back from that battle, the Lord said, that you, you messed up a little bit. We missed that scripture. I'll get back to you. But he, when he came back from that battle, when he, I remember, he almost got killed. When he was up there and they were going to go kill him and he cried out. And they said, the Lord helped him. Y'all remember? I, I'm so tickled because he went out there. And put, see, how many times we put our own self in harm way? I mean, he didn't have to go out there. And he should have knew he would get set up. You wear your robe. I'm not going to wear my robe. <laughs> I mean, that's amazing. So the Lord told him, he said, now, because you went out there and you, you let uh, Ahab talk you into doing this, it says that it says what the scripture says that the wrath of the Lord is out against you. OK, so this this is what happened after that. So then there came some that told Jehoshaphat saying there cometh a great multitude against thee from beyond the sea on this side. This is the wrath of God going out against him. See, this is how God deal with us. Amen. And behold, they be in Hazamathar, which is in Gedi. Next verse. And Jehoshaphat feared. Now, see, he got scared. He just saw the Lord win a battle for Ahab. And Ahab didn't, huh, I mean, and he just saw the Lord save his life. They were finna kill him. So it says that he feared, uh, Joseph had, Jehoshaphat feared and set himself to seek the Lord and proclaimed the fast. Next verse. And Judah gathered themselves together to ask the Lord. Now look at all this stuff he says. Let's go down to verse, let me see verse 5. And Jehoshaphat stood in the congregation of Judah and Jerusalem in the house of the Lord before the, before the new court. And say, O Lord, our God of, of our fathers, art thou not God in heaven and rulest not thou over all the kingdoms of the heathens? And in thy hand there is not power and might so that none is able to withstand thee. He goes on and on. I don't want to read all of that, though. Let me see. Go down to, go down to verse 10. Let me read verse 7. Yes, okay. And now behold, the children of Ammon and Moab and Mount Seir, whom thou wouldest not let Israel invade when they came out of the land of Egypt. He knows all this stuff. Because you remember, the kings had to read all it, read everything when they became king. They had to know the history and everything and know God. And it says, came out of Egypt, and they turned from them and, and destroyed them not. Next verse. Behold, I say, how they reward us to come to cast us out of thy possession, which thou hast given us in here. See, what he's doing, he's bringing God back to remembrance of his word. Now, Lord, you gave us this. Don't let him take it from us. <laughs> Go ahead. Out of all the great stuff he saw God do, though, our, oh, our God, would I not judge them? Let's go down to 13. Uh, 14. Listen to this. Then upon, now remember now, we're getting an eye view. We're able to see what's going on. Our eyes are open to just not the natural realm, but the spirit realm. And uh, then upon Jehiel, the son of Zechariah, the son of Benaniah, the son of Jehiel, the son of Mathaniah, a Levite, of the sons of Asaph, came the spirit of the Lord in the midst of the congregation. We don't never know who the spirit of the Lord is going to speak through. So, so, so he didn't proclaim, he didn't ask the Lord, they don't fast. Now somebody got a word from the Lord. Next verse. And he said, hearken ye all Judah and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem, and you King Jehoshaphat. This is God speaking. Thus saith the Lord unto you, be not afraid nor dismayed by reason of this great multitude, for the battle is not yours but God's. Ah, glory. That's where they get that scripture from. You need to write that down. Tomorrow you will go down against them, and behold, they come up by the cliff of Ziz. He's telling them uh, where, where they're going to be at tomorrow. See, God is the God. He's already in tomorrow. See how we're worrying about tomorrow? God is already there. He's already seen the whole thing play out. He says, now tomorrow about this time, they're going to be at this such and such a place. Do we not know who our God is? Oh, my goodness. He said, tomorrow about this time, and ye shall find them at the end of the brook before the wilderness in Juriel. Next verse. And ye shall not need to fight in this battle. Set yourselves, stand ye still, and see the salvation of the Lord with you. O Judah and Jerusalem, fear not, nor be dismayed. Tomorrow go out against them, for the Lord will be with you. Next verse. And Jehoshaphat bowed his head with his face to the ground, and all of Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem fell before the Lord, worshiping the Lord. Next verse. Okay, let me see. That is good. I want to go. Let me see. 
So we see here that the battle belongs to the Lord. Amen. And this is where this scripture come from. The battle is not ours. It belongs to the Lord. Amen. Let me get this. because I want to make sure I'm going to the right verse. Okay. Let's get verse. So let's get, um, let's get verse 20. It is right there. And so they rose early in the morning and went forth in the wilderness of Tekoa. And as they went forth, Jehoshaphat stood and said, Hear me, O Judah, and the inhabitants of Jerusalem. Believe in the Lord your God, so shall you be established. What? Oh, my goodness. Believe the Lord, and so shall you be established. That's insight right there. If you put your trust in God, he will establish you. So many people in the world today need to be established. They're all over the place. Is that something we hear? They're just all over the place. Not established, just rambling around, don't have any, any destination. And it says, believe his prophet, so yeah, shall you prosper. Next verse. And when he, came, when he had con uh, consulted with the people, he appointed singers unto the Lord that they should praise their beauty Praise the beauty of holiness. And they went out before the army and to say, praise the Lord for his mercy endureth forever. So, see, Jehoshaphat knew what to do. He knew what to do. God done gave him exceeding promises. So what I learned about this is that you don't have to praise God after the victory. You praise him before the victory because he's worthy. He's worthy. So, see, when we're here in this place worshiping, do, you, do we understand and comprehend and know all the great things that God has done for us? Absolutely not. Do we know how many times our life has been spared? Do we know how many? Do, could we just comprehend? I can just think how many times I was in the road driving, and me and Pastor Dave was talking about that the other day, and he, we always talk about that blind spot right there. And I said, you know, a lot of times I'm getting ready to move, and I look and don't see nobody, and right before I pull out, a car goes, zoom. And, and, and how many times did somebody from behind you or whatever could have hit us and we just in the car, glory, hallelujah, we don't even know we was in death. We don't even know we was in the pathway of death. We have no idea that we was in the pathway of death. Amen? But I tell you the truth, God is faithful. And then uh, after that, it says that the Lord didn't already uh, uh, fought everybody. Let me see here. Okay, we got to read verse 24. We just got to. <laughs> so after all this, and Judah when came, and when Judah came toward the watchtower in the wilderness, they looked unto the multitude, and behold, they were dead bodies fallen to the earth, and none escaped. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Some battles they fight in, right? This battle, they didn't fight nothing. Is that not what God said? He said, you don't need to fight in this battle. You need to hold your peace, and I will fight this battle. So when they went and looked, the enemy was already laid down on the ground. How many times has God done that for us? We didn't even know it was a battle coming, and the Lord had already fought the battle for us. He, we, didn't even know, we didn't know about the battle. The battle already been won. He's showing us in his word that he is the God of the battles. He is the God that can fight a battle. And, and there are times you see Israel, they go out and they fight and they chase them off and they run them down and they enjoy doing that. Amen. But there are times when we hold our peace and keep our mouth closed and let the Lord fight our battles. Amen. And he said when they got there, and, but then let's look at the next part. This is what's good. And when Joseph and his people came to take away the spoils of them, they found among them in abundance both riches with the dead bodies, precious jewels. They stripped them off more than they could carry away. And they were three days trying to get all this stuff. Is that not how God does us? It took them three days to get all the loot. Now, you didn't even fight the battle, and you came out on top. Is that not what he says in the New Testament? I'm going to give you houses you didn't build. I'm gonna I mean, we believe the word of the Lord, believe the prophet, and you will prosper. When the man of God, the woman, lead the prophet, trust in God, and you will be established. Believe the word of the Lord, believe the word of the prophet, and you will prosper. Amen? And when they didn't have to do anything. They would... I, I, I guarantee you they went up there with their spears and their armor and all that stuff. Even though God said you don't have to fight, 
But they went up there armed because they knew it was going to be a battle. But the Lord showed us that every battle that we, we don't have to fight every battle. We do not have to fight every battle. Sometimes we got to hold our peace. So he show, if we look at this New Testament, I mean this Old Testament like we should, we seen into the realm of the spirit. We seen how things transpire. We seen what evil and wicked men get. So the word of God says, this is one scripture I want to show you. So this is why I want to give you this one. Get Psalms 37 and 7. This is important. Rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him. Fret not thyself because of him who prosper in his way. Did we not see Ahab think he prosper in the way? Did we not see Jezebel think she prosper in the way? It says, wait patiently for him because the man, of the, the, uh, it says, uh, don't fret yourself because of the man that seemed like he bring wicked devices to pass. Don't, you hate, don't we just hate it when we see somebody low down and dirty and it seems like they got away with it? But he letting us know they don't get away with it. They don't get away with it. It says, fret not thyself. Don't take a minute's bother. Don't take a minute's concern. Don't worry about it. It says, fret not thyself. Don't worry about people that seem to bring evil devices to pass. Jezebel brought something to pass, but let me tell you something. She paid with her life. She paid with her life. And not only did she pay with her life, the people in, that was under their watch paid with them. Even the children, the children, children paid with their life. Let me see if it's one more. And then um, let's get Daniel 11.32. As such as do wickedly against the covenant shall he shall he corrupt by flatteries. This is in Daniel. I really was, you know, some scriptures have an A and a B. I really wanted to read the B part on this one. So it says, but the people that do know their God shall be strong and do exploits. The people that know their God, they shall be strong and they shall do exploits. So the key here is no. No. We got to quit getting to the place where we know of God. We got to quit knowing of him. You know how people think they know God and they just God this and God that. They don't know him. But the people that know, that are intimately acquainted with their God, they shall do exploits. And so what is the Lord teaching us in this Bible survey? You got to know me. You got to know my compassion. You got to know my mercy. You got to know the course of heaven. You got to know I'm a good God. You got to know I'm faithful. You got to know that if we don't see nothing else, God is showing us how he's keeping covenant with David, who's been dead for years and years and years and years, who says he's a God that keep a covenant to a thousand generations. That's the God that you need to know. A God that keeps covenant. So when you leave this, like when you see people, people leave and coming out of this world, we don't have to worry about that stuff because God got our back even when we gone. I mean, do we see this? Even when you gone, God is going to scoot your kids out of the way of a, of a, of a traffic jam or, a, or something that could kill them. We don't have to worry about nothing. We don't have nothing to worry about. Our God is a covenant-keeping God. And he is showing, every time he turn around, he's talking about, but because of my servant David, I'm going to keep a light in Israel. And y'all low down and dirty. Y'all should be ashamed of yourself. But for David, I'm going to do it. But for David, I'm going to do it. What does that tell us about a person that makes covenant with God? Are we not in covenant with God? Are we not in covenant with God? Do we understand what a covenant is? God is a covenant keeping God. And he's not going to let his word, not one word of God going to drop to the ground. Let me see if that's it. Okay, this is one verse. So uh, go down to verse 31, and we're going to end. We're going to just about close up with this. So I'm sorry. Go back to 2 Chronicles 20, verse 31. 2 Chronicles 20, verse 31. And Jehoshaphat reigned over Judah, and he was 30 and 5 years old when he began to reign, and he reigned 20 and 5 years in Jerusalem. And his mother's name was Azubah, the daughter of Shelih. 
Next verse. And he walked in the ways of Asa, his father, and departed not from it, doing that which was right in the sight of the Lord. But we know he messed up a little bit, but look at how God talks about us. Next verse. How be it, and this is what I'll share with you, how be it the high places were not taken away, as for the people had not prepared their hearts unto God, to the God of their fathers. These people are still struggling because all of all, everybody coming in, serving other gods, whatever. But remember, I you, they let a few things stay. He did what he thought was right, but they left some stuff. Next verse. Now, the rest of the acts of Jehoshaphat, the first and the last, they are written in the book of Jehu. Go down. Is there another one? There's something else I want to go to. Okay, this is it. Now, Pay attention. And after this, did Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, join himself with Ahazah, king of Israel? Now, he already had joined himself with uh, Ahab. And Ahab, he got into some trouble with Ahab. But nevertheless, God worked with him. But see, this is why I like Chronicles, because it go into a little bit more in depth. So let's look at it. He didn't join himself already, but it already tells us that he joined with Ahazah, king of Israel, who were very wicked. Now, here we go. Joining affinity with people. And, and I'm telling you, the Lord is putting this in here for a reason. Sometimes we just overlook stuff. and We don't pay attention to stuff. But we are not supposed to be joining, joining with people that's not walking the way we're walking. It affects our life in more ways than we can imagine. So let's look here. And he joined himself with him to make ships to go to Tarshish. And they made uh, the ships in uh, Ezion Geber. And then Eleazar, the son of Dodova, uh, of Marsa, prophesied against Jehoshaphat. He, he, got, he got to get a word now. Because thou hast joined thyself with Ahazah, the Lord had broken thy works. And the ships were broken, and they were not able to go to Tarshish. Next verse. Now Jehoshaphat slept with his fathers and was buried in a, with his father in the city of David. And Jer Jerohom, his son, reigned in his stead. Do we see this? It's a reason why the Lord wants us to see this. Even though he did right before the Lord. So that lets us know that there are some things in our life that we got to deal with and work on. And so not once did he do this, but twice. Not once did he do this, but twice. But the Lord said, because you joined forces with this guy, I'm going to destroy this stuff that you're trying to make to pass. So sometimes we're trying to make something come to pass that won't come to pass because the Lord is against it. The Lord's word is against it. So let us continue to read and study, and we'll be back next week. I hope you all got something out of that tonight. Amen? Amen. 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 Hallelujah.